My name is Yasser, I'm a senior lecturer in pharmacy practice and I'm also a specialist antimicrobial pharmacist in secondary care. I've been studying as an undergraduate student for five years now and I've also been studying as a postgraduate student for two years. And one thing that I've found is that during the seven years, you'll find almost no consensus on the most effective study techniques or looking at or consideration of the study techniques that we currently use and seeing if they are effective. So as a postgraduate student, I started looking at the evidence base behind different study methods. Study methods that we use quite often like highlighting and note taking and seeing if those work or if there are study methods that are more effective that are out there. So this is something that's really close to me and that's because currently I work as a senior lecturer in pharmacy practice. So I teach a lot of undergraduate students that study pharmacy and really that's something that they always struggle with. How do you study with an effective study method where you're utilizing your time wisely. So this is something that I'm going to explore in the next few videos. Firstly, I'm going to be exploring some of the study techniques that we use quite often and that there's a low evidence base supporting its effective use. So let's think about it. When's the last time you actually looked at the evidence base behind study methods to see if they're actually effective? When's the last time that you actually did some research on this? Probably not, and probably a lot of the teachers that you've seen haven't actually discussed this, and that's because there's not a lot of exploration with regards to the evidence base behind this. So I want to read an extract to you from a paper in 1989 by a man called Dunlowski, and I'm going to read this extract to you because it's quite interesting. So what the paper says is that psychologists have been developing and evaluating the efficacy of techniques for study and instruction for more than 100 years. Nevertheless, some effective techniques are underutilized. Many teachers do not learn about them, hence many students do not use them, despite evidence suggesting that the techniques could benefit student achievement with little added effort. Also, some learning techniques that are popular and often used by students are relatively ineffective. And this is exploring study methods like note-taking, which we'll speak about in this video. One potential reason for the disconnect between research on the efficacy of learning techniques and their use in educational practice is the fact that there are so many techniques currently available. So, it's difficult for educators to sift through these techniques to see what would be easy and effective for these students. So what it's trying to say is the lack of research with regards to different study techniques is what leads to teachers not actually teaching students how to study content for their examination. I set up a poll on the Microfarm Instagram page which is linked in the description box and what I found is that over two thirds of students that actually participated in the poll stated that they either use rereading, note taking, or highlighting as a study method for their examinations. And these three study methods are known to have the lowest utility when it comes to revising for an assessment. So this demonstrates to me the lack of understanding of the evidence base of different study methods. In this video, let's explore the evidence base behind note-taking, for example, which is something that's very commonly used. Let's look at what this paper in 1989 states about note-taking. The study conducted in 1979's results fit nicely with the claim that summarization or note-taking boosts learning and retention. The study in 1989 by Dunlowski concluded that on the basis of available evidence, they rated summarization or note-taking as a low utility. It can be an effective learning strategy for learners who already are skilled at summarizing or note-taking. However, many of the learners, including children, high school students, and even some undergraduates, will require extensive training on how to summarize the material, which makes the strategy much less feasible. Our enthusiasm is further dampened by mixed findings regarding 
which tasks summarization or note taking actually helps. Although summarization has been examined with a wide range of text materials, many researchers have pointed to factors of these texts that seem to likely moderate the effects of summarization in terms of length. And future research really should be aimed at investigating such factors. Many researchers have pointed to factors of these texts that seem likely to moderate the effects of summarization, for example, the length, and future research should be aimed at investigating such factors. Finally, although many studies have examined summarization or note taking in the classroom, what are lacking are classroom studies examining the effectiveness of summarization or note taking as a technique that boosts students' learning, comprehension, and retention of course content. Now, what tended to happen when students were summarizing information was the fact that in many of the studies, students were actively trying to identify what is important with regards to the content that they were summarizing, and they were often very poor at identifying what was important for the assessment. And that's why when they were compared to students that were using other study methods that we'll speak in later videos, what they found was the fact that students were very poor at actually summarizing material. Um, they were very poor at exploring what that material actually wanted to say. So if the summarization of that material was inaccurate, they in fact were learning inaccurate material for their examination. So being an effective note taker really depends on the fact that you've had extensive training on how to take accurate notes, how to summarize material in a way that accurately depicts what the textbook, for example, is trying to say. And that's something that students are very poor at. That's why note taking is actually a low utility study method. We're going to explore some study methods that have a lot more evidence behind them to tell you how you should be studying for examinations. If you found this video useful, you can also sign up to my Skillshare class, which is in the description box below for free. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.